Hi, this is Jonah Dempsey, and I'm in Ibiza at Festival Club, Club Festival, the ruins of Club Festival, the graffiti ruins. And uh, I'm going to follow up on our Elements of Compatibility series, talking about the difference between the Sun Earths and the nodes when it comes to color. So as we looked at, color has to do with resilience, colors one and two, low resilience, pessimistic, colors three and four, medium resilience, realistic, colors five and six, high resilience, optimistic. And the difference between the Sun Earths and the nodes, as we looked at in the video on tone, um, there are many differences. I mean, the nodes are so multivalent, but one of the things that Steve Rhodes points out is that the nodes are who we are drawn to in life. And I would just add the caveat that we almost start identified with the nodes and then through self-love and living as ourselves and through getting in touch with the movement and flow of life, through inner authority, through honoring our inner decision-making process, things like that, through honoring our strategy, we essentially align ourselves more to the sun earth. So it's almost as if when you come in, you are the environment, you're identified with the environment. I mean, Ra talks about people being like furniture, like human furniture. And if you'll see that you have a, a lot more nodal commonality than you do with Sun Earth. Sun Earth, you come in the same Sun Earth as, as other people for about 5.7 days. You come in with the same nodes as people for about three and a half months. So you and everybody else born in a three and a half month window, right? There's really only usually about three, sometimes four nodal variations for a year. And yet we have um, all the different, all those different gate variations for the year, 64, right? So we have the 64 possible suns of the year, 32 possible gate variations for the year, but only three, sometimes four possible nodal variations for the year. So when you come into life and you're identified with the nodes, it's sort of, um, you know, it's sort of as if you're identified with the environment or the furniture or the background. You're not really identified truly as yourself. And then you have to kind of come into being your, yourself truly, which is going to be um, the, the sun earth, right? So I, I think that's the, my only really caveat or modification to what uh, Steve Rhodes says. But otherwise, I think it's very much true. We like the people who match our nodes. Hey, guys. Yeah, doing a little location scouting for 4%, the experiment. Um, human design documentary film, our pr production coordinator. And uh, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? Yeah, so cool, cool little spot we found here. So... Um, yeah, the, basically you end, up, you end up with all sorts of interesting combinations. You can be a double low resilience person drawn to double high resilience. You can be double high resilience drawn to double low resilience. You can be a mix of high and low resilience, like with the transitional profiles, drawn to medium resilience. I mean, you can be drawn to people who are like yourself. You can be drawn to people who are different from yourself. There's a lot of interesting permutations here, and I would urge you to play with these permutations because it gets really fascinating. Like, just let's just do a few examples. So um, if you have a lower color of your nodes, lower than your sun earth, you might feel like a bull in a china shop. And you might feel like you're too big. You might feel like your voice is too loud. You might feel like you need to tone yourself down a little bit. You might have some self-recrimination over not being sensitive enough and quiet enough and things of that nature. I actually have this, um, at least on the personality side, where I feel like I'm too harsh. I feel like I'm being harsher than I really am. Why? Because I have desire, color three, as my motivation, but I have survival view, first color for my personality nodes. So again, the more I have self-love, the more I don't worry about it. Like the more I live my design, the more I embrace self-love, live as myself, the more I'm just kind of like, I can be who I am, no problem. I'm not trying to be someone else. And I like very sensitive people. I like first color motivation people. I like people who are very sensitive and careful and maybe a little more fragile, maybe a little lower resilience. I may be a little more pessimistic than me. They think it's not gonna work. I, that's actually refreshing to me. I have a hard time with the higher resilience people who are too optimistic. I'm like, you guys are being way overly optimistic thinking this is gonna work. Please be a little more cautious here. Please be a little more pessimistic. So I really am drawn to people like that. And I think that's the true self-expression, right? The true self, the expression of the true self is I'm drawn to, and I see the world. It's kind of 
you know, again, it's very multivalent, but I'm drawn to people who express that and I see the world in that way because it's also my view or perspective, right? So that's, I think, the true self-expression. The not self-expression is I need to change who I am because I don't have enough self-love, so I need to be quieter. I need to be more sensitive. I need to be more careful. Wow, I really screwed that up because I wasn't sensitive enough. I screwed that up because I was too harsh. I screwed that up because I was too direct. Things like that. That's the sort of negative self-talk. And it's, it's hard not to fall into that. I mean, I literally have relationships in my life where I'm like, first of all, because I'm drawn to lower resilience people, they're going to be more sensitive. And then if I say something that hurts them, I blame myself and have a lot of self-recrimination and shame and regret. I also have gate 12, line 3, fixed and detriment, for those who know about that. The self-hatred or the self-loathing um, that comes from having said the wrong thing and had a really negative impact. And so and this is a big part of my story, right? But, but as I discover deeper and deeper self-love, I can accept myself having higher resilience than my nodes, and that's okay, right? Now, you also have the other story. You have people with low resilience sun earth and high resilience uh, nodes and for them it's this opposite where they feel like they need to speak louder they feel like they need to be you know you, these are the people that have like valleys or shores or they have um, personal view or probability view but they have color one or two in their motivations determinations these are people who really, you know, if your sun earth is lower, even colors three or four, if you have, a, you know, it's kind of, it's like, even if you have like a color one or two um, sun earth and you have a color three or four nodes or a color three and four sun earth or color five and six nodes, that's still a version of this, right? That That's still a version of, I need to be louder. I need to be bigger. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't need to be more resilient. You don't need to have thicker skin. You don't need to be tougher. You don't need to get back on the horse. All of these things are the sort of negative self-talk that come from trying to be the nodes. It's almost as if the nodes are the ideal that we try to live up to, trying to be the nodes when in reality we just need to be the sun earth. We don't have to be the nodes. But it's almost as if the not self has a sort of identification with the nodes as if that was what was really going to bring you your signature, as if the nodes would really bring me satisfaction. They don't. They don't. The nodes are my environment. They're markers. They're signposts. They're how I see the world and they're what I see in the world. And they're kind of where I'm supposed to be and maybe who I'm supposed to be with or at least spend a lot of time with. And yet they're not representative of my true purpose. They're not representative of who I really am, right? But again, we have people that are trying to, to be more like the nodes. It's like, there's this, this the whole, it's the not good enough game. The not self thinks it's not good enough. Most people feel like they're not good enough, like they're not doing it right, like they're not living it out. And it's like ironic because it's true, they're not living their design. But the irony is that to really live your design is to get rid of the feeling like you're not living your design. And the only way you do that is through self-love. You do that by leaning into the sun earth. So I'm a very realistic person, right? I have the same colors as, as Ra, same colors and tones as Ra. And um, very realistic person. He was also very realistic. Saw the world through the lens of realism, right? Um, even sort of a harsh, gritty realism, even we could say. Uh, and that's okay, right? That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to, uh, and not, not, I shouldn't even say see the world because of course seeing the world is the nodes, but to embody, to embody realism. That's what I'm really here to do. I'm here to embody realism. I'm here for my outer authority to express realism, to be a bastion of realism. And I don't need to be more pessimistic than I am. But because I have survival view, which is a fundamentally pessimistic view, I'm here to sort of see things pessimistically, and I'm here to really appreciate and, and enjoy being around people who are naturally pessimistic. Now, somewhere out there, there's somebody with a fear or a hope, sun, earth, you know, motivation, and they have um, power view, power or, um, or wanting. And so th that person's going to be really drawn to me because they're going to be naturally pessimistic, but drawn to people who are realistic. So you can kind of see how these permutations work. You can kind of play with it. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much what we do. There's many different combinations here. Obviously, there's going to be nuances of whether it's on the personality or the design side. 
But this is really something you can play with. I think you have the formulas now to really explore color resilience. And you can also see how important this is in relationships. How often, um, say, you know, I'm with somebody who's high resilience and I have my survival view, I'm trying to get them to be more sensitive. Well, I should stop trying, right? This is the thing is we shouldn't, we shouldn't try to change our partners. We shouldn't have this power struggle of you need to be different than who you are. Besides to self-love, true love of the other involves accepting who they actually are. And so if I'm going around saying, well, you need to be more sensitive, you're not sensitive enough. No, they're high resilience. You know, that's who they are. Or the contrary, somebody who has um, a higher color, more resilient nodes, and they're with a partner that's low resilience, and they're like, you just need to be tougher. You just need to toughen up. You just need to not worry about it so much. Well, that's not necessarily the most healthy advice for them.